What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to 1968. Today, I'm going to go over my top 15 favorite songs from that year. What was happening in 1968? Well, the Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl. The Detroit Tigers won the World Series. Boston Celtics won the NBA Finals. Montreal Canadiens won the Stanley Cup. Funny Girl was tops at the box office. Laugh In, Laugh In was the top rated TV show. And Hey Jude was the top selling song of 1968. Um, yeah, I have to admit that I am enjoying songs much more than I, than I was albums. Mind you, I was doing albums in the 2000s. 2015 was the one I finished off with. And yeah, this is a much, it's, it's, I don't, it's just, it's easier. It just, you listen to them and easier to put in order. Um, I do have some honorable mentions and it seems like I can, I can put in order the ones I like and then the rest are kind of like, oh, I like these songs, but I mean, which one do I like more than the other? And then so I'll just honorable mention. So let's get started with the honorable mentions. Up first, we've got Everyday People from Sly and the Family Stone, Crossroads from Cream, You Keep Me Hanging On from Vanilla Fudge, I Second the Emotion from uh, Smokey Robinson. And Sunday Morning from Spanky and Our Gang. That was written by uh, Margot Gurion. Uh, Linus of Hollywood did a cover of that. It's a really, it's a very, very, very well-written song, Margot Gurion. So, yeah, let's get going here with my, that was my Andrew Oi. Yeah, he would love it. Let's get going with my top 15. Coming in at number 15. I remember the first time I, I picked up uh, an album from these guys, and I didn't know, that I'd heard the song before. But I didn't know it was them because I, I'd assume they were like a 70s band and this is from the 60s. But this is Hush from Deep Purple. Great groove. Great. Uh, it's really good groove. I like that. It's quite it's quite aggressive for 68. Like there's something to be said about Deep Purple being one of the first heavy metal bands. Mind you, with Hammond Organ, I don't know how heavy they can be. Anyways, Hush from Deep Purple is number 15, coming in at number 14. I Ain't Superstitious from Jeff Beck. Um, this is definitely in a Martin Scorsese film. Pretty sure it's uh pretty sure it's casino. I don't think it's good fellas. And uh I could be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh yeah, this is a, a another sort of aggressive, heavy. Cool tune. Again, like we're getting like just when we when we got to sixty five, there's just a few songs that kind of had that sounded like what music was going to become in like five years from then. And you listen to some of that other stuff, like that kind of like the barber shock, Mister Sin, that type of crap. It's like that's was kind of dominating for a while, then slowly it's fading away, and then. Um, the, uh, the, the, I ain't superstitious. It's like, that is, I couldn't have thought of a song coming out like that in 66, even this is breaking new ground. And it's, it must've been exciting times to have been around at that point. So that is, I ain't superstitious from Jeff Beck at number 14 at number 13. We've got lady willpower from Gary Puckett and the union Jack. I thought it was a union gap. Uh, really nice vocal performance. He's got an excellent voice. It's kind of like, it's almost a little over the top for this style of music. It's, uh, this is like the sixties. It's like these guys, like you're not doing like you're doing, 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 doing. you're one, four, five. If you know music, it's so much more complex. There's so many more cores, it's so much it's just more fun. I I like. To, I'm having a good time. I'm having a very good time. So that's Lady Willpower from Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. I'm going to call them coming in at number thirteen. Coming in at number twelve, another excellent vocal f- performance. This is Delilah from Tom Jones. Shout out to "It's Not Unusual" from my sixty to sixty-five. I would have definitely had "It's Not Unusual" in my top five. That is an excellent song. Don't know how I missed it, but it happens. Delilah. This is one that was another one of those songs that was on my mom's uh, mixtape. Why, 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 Delilah? 
Tom Jones is a powerful voice. He's an excellent singer. This is a, I, I really like the, I like the song and I like his performance. Ah. Um, yeah. Check it out if you've not heard it. That is Delilah from Tom Jones coming in at number 12. At number 11, we've got one from the left-handed axe man. This is Burning the Midnight Lamp from Jimi Hendrix. Obviously, I'm a big Jimi Hendrix fan. Lots of stuff I can like, but I thought I'd choose something a little bit different, not as not as played out, if you may. This is Burning the Midnight Lamp. I first heard this, pretty sure it was on the first, the, this, the version that I heard first was very close to when I'd heard this actual version, maybe within a year or so, was Living Color had done uh, a cover from their Biscuits EP. I think that came out around 19... 90, 90, 91 and they do a cover of this one and they do a funky version like they do it's kind of like a sort of a reggae sort of a it's sort of a different thing they throw it in there throw in another wrench and that's when i sort of heard the song this is a pretty cool song i like didn't know much about it and then i heard jimmy's version i'm like this is an excellent Excellent song. Lots of nice chord changes. Like most of the things I like, you guys are going to sense, you're going to notice a pattern here. Anyways, that's Burning the Midnight Lamp from Jimi Hendrix at number 11. Coming up, number 10, one of the more different tracks out there. This is the Titan Up from Archie Bell and the Drells. I was just farting around on the bass playing this bass line. I got to get some new strings for that thing. Jesus, gross to play. Do, 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 this one homer simpson mentioned this song on simpsons one episode but uh, this is again on one of those mixed albums of my parents and uh i always like the i don't know if i sang the right notes i probably didn't but uh it was it's it's a quirky song but some tight playing it's it's fun it's a fun track that's Tighten Up from Archie Bell and the Drills at number 10. Coming in at number 9, we've got one I know you've, you've heard. You've obviously heard this one. doesn't necessarily mean it's a rock one. This is Build Me Up Buttercup from the found, or Foundations. It doesn't say the Foundations. Pretty sure this is on the X, the um, uh, ending credits for the Something About Mary. That movie's almost 30 years old. Jesus uh great tune another very well written song nice chord progression nice melody uh the 60s they were good man that is build me up buttercup from foundations at number nine coming in at number eight this is one of several good tracks from these guys this is hello i love you from <laughs> the doors i keep wanting to say come on come on come on touch me baby da, 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 da. Very different, very different song compared to, you know, Touch Me. Uh, but this is... It's a very different sounding song. You know, Riders on the Storm and I Light My Fire, this. And like, they had some... They weren't they weren't a one-trick pony, that's for sure. I got to give those guys some credit. Good track, fun track. That is Hello, I Love You from The Doors at number eight. Coming in at number seven, these guys is... Second biggest song, but to me is not as played out. This is Magic Carpet Ride from Steppenwolf. Good groove, really good groove. Close your eyes, go. It kind of has sort of two parts where it uh, kind of goes out and kind of a little bit more do. I guess it's kind of traveling Magic Carpet Ride and then it, and it jumps back in. Great tune. Lots of great tunes in this era, let me tell you. So that is Magic Carpet Ride from the not doors. Steppenwolf, Jesus, at number seven. Coming in at number six, this is for sure the tightest song of the year. This is I Got the Feeling from James Brown. It's one of those first time I, I remember, first time I, I can distinctly remember hearing the song. I, I don't think I was listening to the drums at that time, but it was the Cosby show when they would do like the little song thing. Um, and uh, Rudy's coming down, baby, 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 baby. Just, I mean, you know, when you're 10 years old, the Cosbys are on. That was just the best thing ever. Rudy was the cutest. But like, don't, don't. 
notes. Ah, one, two, and. The snare drum on the, instead of one, two, three, four, it's one, two, and three, four, three, two, and, two, and, it's box. One, two, and, four, and. So it's on the end of the four, two and the end of the four. It gives it that, that tension, that funkiness. It's just, that's the first time I heard that. I'm like, you can do that. You can just not hit the snare on the, on the two. You can hold back half beat. Very tight, excellent, excellent, fun song to play drums to as well. That's I Got the Feeling from James Brown coming in at number six. Here we are at the top five, another legend. This is For Once in My Life from Stevie Wonder. Try to learn this on the piano. I don't know that many chords. Let's just put it that way. Stevie Wonder can write. Wow. The last time I remember hearing this one, I think it was Ari had gotten fired. He left the company when Terrence came back and uh, 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 Lloyd gave him a ride home when he was kind of drunk and this song was playing on the radio. He's like, oh, Mrs. Ari, come out, dance, you know. A uh, very fun song, very pretty song, very, very nice melody and very well written. That is For Once in My Life from Stevie Wonder coming in at number five. Coming at number four, we've got... One that I was kind of surprised how much I enjoyed it when I give it another listen. This is Say a Little Prayer from Aretha Franklin. I met a girl named Sasha when I was doing a course in Victoria, B.C. 22 years ago. And we were exchanging songs. And I remember she said, oh, I really like this one. And I went home and checked it out or threw it on. I don't think YouTube is even around then. And uh, yeah, it was a very pretty song. Um and I remember it from the Best Friends Wedding. This is Julie Roberts and Cameron Diaz. I believe it was in that movie. But uh, listen to it again. I'm like, this is... Excellent song. Really, really happy. I found it. Refound it again. So that's I Say a Little Prayer from Aretha Franklin coming in at number four. Coming in at number... Number five, we've got like four, one, two, three. This is the fourth black person in a row. There, there's no, there's no whitewashing my list. Let me just tell you, this is sitting at the sitting on the dock of the bay from Otis Redding. Great vocals. This guy is, was such an amazing singer. It's too bad he he left us, left us too early. Great tune. You've probably heard it a thousand times. And again, that was another one that was on one of my mom's. Mixtapes is an excellent song. Still love it. Sitting at the dock of the bay from Otis Redding at number three. Coming in at number two, the Fab Four with Obla Di Obla Da. Obviously with the Beatles, there's lots you can choose. But for me, I remember this one. It was, I think, track three on one of the, the, the 67 to 70, the blue album. And then there was a 63 to 66, the red one. So my parents had the, the four sorry, the two record set. And this is, I think was track three after it was get back. And it's a fun song. It's kind of a, it's got a sort of a, it's got a nice sort of a lifty beat. I'm not sure what they did to make it sort of give it that sort of movement and that breathing, but it's a, it's a funky, it's a funky tune. It's kind of, it's a bit corny, but I mean, I have some good memories with it. So that is, I think, is one of my favorite first favorite Beatles songs. So that is Obla Di Obla Da at number two. Coming in at number one, my most favorite, easily my most favorite song from 1968 is Crimson and Clover from Tommy James and the Shondells. I don't know if you watch this, but I've been watching the Fly on the Wall podcast with Dana Carvey and David Spade. It is excellent if you love Saturday Night Live. Obviously, I do. And you love comedy. Obviously, I do. They had Kings of Leon on, which is not very normal. They usually don't have musical guests. It's usually just actors, comedians, and and whatnot. But they had Kings of Leon. And the meaning of this song came up in conversation. So let's just let's just look at the look at the words. Crimson and clover. So apparently the clover was literal clover, clover in a field. Crimson is red. What else is red? Apparently, this song is about losing your virginity in a field of clover. Ah. <laughs> Will she come crawling over? 
I don't know. That almost ruined the song for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna block that out of my head. I'm just gonna say no. The person is a fashionista. They like a certain color, crimson and clover. It was a, it was about a it was about a fancy paisley shaped jacket. That's what the song is about. So we'll forget about that the tall tale that Kings of Leon were telling us. So yes, love this song. I've always loved it. Uh, even as a little kid, uh, has not lost it on me. It's it's still as good. Uh, when it does that sort of wow 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 wow, because there's a longer version and there's more of a radio edit version, but then when it comes back in, it, it's, it's almost like a boom. They hit a coda and the crimson and clover over and over. But it's almost like it comes in and a, like a. It's almost like they modulate up a key or a step, up a key. They modulate up a full step, and it just sounds different. It's like it's not hitting on that one chord like we're expecting, but it just is sort of a, a subversion of our expectations. Anyways, that's it for 1968. Uh, I would have been here a day earlier, but I had some audio issues. Who knows? Nobody touches anything in here. And then all of a sudden, th things aren't working. I think it was a power outage and pff, whatever. The, the My uh, Apollo Twin sound card was not talking with my MacBook Air. Anyway, so I will be back soon for 1969 in a few days. So I will catch you guys then. Peace.